Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jordan here. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, so, recently picked up my first full frame mirrorless camera and I purchased a full frame mirrorless lens for it. And so I'm going to do a little review on this. This is the Venus Optics Laowa 14mm f4 zero distortion lens for Canon RF mount. So let's go ahead and get into it. Man, that was a mouthful. So this is specifically made for the Canon RF full frame mirrorless mount. Now on, I think it was bnhphoto.com, which is where I purchased this lens from, uh, in the description on this lens, they say that this also fits the APS-C size bodies. You can crop in on the EOS RP with a 1.6 times crop. So it'll give you a focal length of about 22 and a half to 23 millimeters. If you want to get a little bit more detail out of certain like landscape photos, you probably would want to do that. 14 millimeters is pretty wide. I have the Rokinon 10 millimeter F 2.8 for the APS-C style bodies. So for like my Canon SL3 or my Canon T7, when I put the Rokinon 10 millimeter on there, it's equivalently 16 millimeters, which is still pretty good. Uh, I will say that this definitely blows it out of the water as far as what you can get in frame. You wouldn't really think about it, but between a 14 and a 16 millimeter, you do get a lot more in frame. Now, this is a zero distortion lens, so you're not going to get those like weird wall wobbles or the weird walls that like kind of start out straight and then, you know, like curve up. Uh, I've used this probably for about a week now, and I've done a lot of different tests with it, uh, like standing right next to walls and stuff, and I will tell you this much. So for as wide as it is, it's still going to have that like little bit of like weird stretch towards the sides, but as far as standing right next to like a wall and taking a photo of it, I mean, it is straight up and down. There literally is zero distortion when you're standing right next to a wall, which to be honest, shooting other wide angle lenses, it's insane. So for the price, I paid 549 on bnhphoto.com. There is a 15 millimeter F2 if you want to get like some serious low light capabilities. Uh, I chose the 14 just because I wanted it to be wider. I do some real estate photography, so I wanted to have the most wide angle lens I could get with zero distortion. And so I didn't want to go 12 because I think that would be too wide. And I think 15 at that token, like, I mean, if I was going to go 15, I might as well just keep the Rokin on 10 millimeter F2.8 and not even worry about it. But this lens right here is half the size and probably more than half the weight of the Rokin on 10 millimeter, which is why I chose this lens specifically. So another thing too, uh, I've used this a couple of times to do like some long exposures and stuff with. I went out with this last night. Uh, today is the 28th of December. So what was it 27th, Saturday, the 27th? Uh, anyways, so I took this out last night and um, the town that I live in, we still have our like town Christmas tree up at the courthouse. And so I went and I did some long exposure with that. This lens right here is incredibly sharp. Um, probably one of the sharpest lenses that I own to date next to my Canon 50 millimeter F 1.4. I will say that anything past an F 5.6, um, I will say that you're not really going to notice any extra or added sharpness at like an F 11 or an F 16 to a 22. Um, I would say probably f5.6 to an f8 is probably where you're going to have the sharpest image from this lens. Uh, another really nice thing about this, you get some really nice tack sharp uh, sun stars. Like I was, like I said, I was doing long exposures of the Christmas tree in our town and the sun stars coming off of the tree are like pin sharp. It's ridiculous. If you can swing the price for one of these Lawa lenses, I highly recommend it. Uh, so far, I have been blown away with this, um, especially when mated to my EOS RP. Uh, I've, I'm 
pretty, pretty pleased with it. So if you're looking for a good wide angle lens and you have an EOS R or an EOS RP or an RA, R5 or an R6, might want to look into one of these. So some downsides to this lens, which I think are kind of minute. Uh, number one is a built-in lens hood. So this, I really feel that this lens hood itself is probably a little too small. Um, now the front optics on this is also small, so it's not a huge deal, but I would like to see more wide angle lenses that don't have the lens hood attached where you could attach it and untach it. Um, not that it necessarily gets in any of my photos, but I mean, it's just it's kind of like a, a nuancey thing to me. So take it as it is. Another downside to this lens. So if you're doing stuff that specifically requires you to have like really good low light performance, the widest aperture on this is an F4. So I don't necessarily think that you're going to be able to do a lot of really low light shoots with it. I would say, I mean, for me at least, from my testing when I was trying it out, uh, I was at an F4, uh, probably an ISO of 3200 on the RP, and uh, I still needed to bump up the shutter or the ISO up because honestly, it's F4 is just not really that good for low light. But if you're using this lens, say specifically for like real estate photography or something, you're probably doing either brackets or you're using a flash to begin with. So don't count this out. If you're trying to do astrophotography with this, I mean, you're really gonna have to bump up your ISO. So it's right now at this time, the moon is out. So there's not really a lot of things I can do for astrophotography wise to kind of give you guys an estimate. Um, but I would say for this lens specifically at an F4, you're probably looking to bump your ISO 32 to 6400, depending on how well your system handles low light. Uh, I would say that the EOS RP specifically, I mean, I can, I can shoot easily 8,000 to 10,000 ISO and not really have a lot of noise in my image. But if I could shoot lower at like a 32 or a 1600, still get the results that I want, I probably would. But with this lens, you're really gonna be pushing up your shutter speed and your ISO. And one last thing I want to kind of dive into on this lens. So there is a filter ring on the inside of the lens hood. So anybody that does like landscape photography, I don't necessarily think that you would really need to use it in any sort of like astro or like real estate photography. But let's say if you, bought this specifically for landscape. There's a 52 millimeter thread on the inside of the lens itself. Um, I could see this being a really big problem trying to get filters in, especially if it's, if it's a, like a polarizing filter. Just I don't really feel that it's gonna really fit inside there. Like that's why I kind of wish that the lens hood was um, detachable. So just take it as it is. Uh, if you plan to use filters with this, maybe see if you can get like some sort of a 52 to like 55 filter adapter, like a step up or a step down ring, and maybe put that in there. Just, you know, so this way you have a little bit more clearance because I mean, down here on the inside of the lens hood itself is where the filter ring is and I just, I really feel that trying to get any sort of filters in there is just gonna be a real pain in the ass. Really wish that the lens hood was detachable, but I don't make lenses, so. That was it, guys. If you guys found this video useful or informational, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, also give it a thumbs up, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit all the buttons, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.